What's up my pre-calc people, Michael Princhak here. And in this video, we're going to be talking about vertical dilations. This is in topic 1.12 for AP pre-calculus. All right, so a vertical dilation is what we call a multiplicative transformation. So we're multiplying our function. So a vertical dilation happens when you multiply in front of your function by an A value. So you have A times F of X. Now, what's going to happen is actually one of two things. First, this is going to multiply your function, multiply your outputs of your function by that A value, or actually by the absolute value of A. So if you have a multiply by two out in front of your function, then all of your outputs are going to multiply by two, which is going to stretch you out. If you have a one half out in front, you're going to multiply by a half, and that's actually going to compress your function or shrink it. So we have these dilations of stretching versus shrinking. If your A value is greater than one, that's going to stretch you out, multiplying by A. If your A value is between zero and one, that's going to compress or shrink you, multiplying you by that A value. Now here's the thing. If your A value is less than zero, you also have a reflection across the X axis. So if you have a negative A in front of your value, first handle the dilation, multiply by A. Kind of just ignore the negative for a second. Again, if it's a two, it's going to multiply you by two, and that's going to be a stretch. If your A value is a half, it's going to multiply by a half, that's going to compress you. But if that value also happens to be a negative, that negative doesn't necessarily affect the dilation. The dilation is still by a factor of two or by a factor of one half, basically a factor of A. But that negative is then going to reflect your values across the x-axis. So when you reflect across the x-axis, your x's do not change, it's your y's that change. So a, a y that's up here at positive 5 is going to get reflected and now be at negative 5. Pretty simple. So when we see one of these vertical dilations, you're seeing a value a multiplied by your function out in front. Now, your x's will not change, so if you have an original point, x comma y, your new point is still going to stay as x, but it's your y value that is simply going to multiply by a, by a. And it's going to multiply by a factor of a. If a is greater than 1, it's going to be that stretch I was talking about. If a is between 0 and 1, it's going to be that shrink or that compression that we're talking about. And then again, if a also happens to be negative, that's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. All right, let's take a look at a couple examples. In this example here, it says the function f is defined as f of x equals 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. If this function were to have a vertical dilation by a factor of 2, what is the new function? So again, this is where I have to remember the vertical dilation is taking a function f of x and multiplying it by 2. If I have a factor of 2, it's going to multiply by 2. It's vertical, so that's 2 is happening to the function on the outside of the function. So all I have to do is take my function and multiply it by 2. So I have that 2x squared minus 3x plus 7, and it's multiplied by 2. And, and to be completely honest, this answer right here is good enough for the final answer because it is certainly correct. But obviously I could distribute that 2 to get 4x squared minus 6x plus 14. And the cool thing is I can actually take a quick look at the graph of this. So the red here is the original function, 2x squared minus 3x plus 7. And then if I add in the new function, we see that it's multiplied so that it's, it's, it's vertically stretched. So first off, the vertex got stretched up, and then the whole graph is stretched vertically, which actually makes it skinnier, if that makes sense. So kind of cool that you could graph these functions on Desmos to get a quick look at them. All right, so let's move on to another example here. The function f is being transformed by the following rule, 3 times f of x plus 2. If 3 comma negative 5 is a point on f of x, what is the image of this new point after transformation? So we have this original point, 3 comma negative 5, and we're going to go through this transformation right here, and we want to know what is our new point. So the first thing I notice is that we do have a vertical dilation by a factor of 3. We are multiplying by 3, so it's going to get stretched by 3 vertically. But I also see that I have this plus 2 here. That is going to be a vertical translation up 2. So both of the transformations happening are vertical. So the x coordinate of my point is not going to change at all. 
but the Y coordinate, the output is definitely going to change. I'm just following order of operations. So I'm going to take negative 5, and the first thing I'm going to do is multiply it by 3. It's going to become a negative 15, and then I'm going to add 2. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So there's my new point. So it got vertically stretched. It got multiplied by a factor of 3. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15. And then because of that vertical translation, the entire graph is moving up 2. So negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. Pretty simple there. All right, the parent function g of x equals the square root of x, and it's being transformed by the following rule, 1 fourth times g of x. What, uh, write the new transformed function. Is it being stretched vertically or compressed, and by what factor? All right, so first I see that it's the 1 fourth is being multiplied outside of my function. Anything being multiplied outside of your function or, or being multiplied to your outputs is a vertical dilation. But because that value, that a value of one-fourth, is less than one, but greater than zero, basically it's between zero and one, then that is going to be a compression by a factor of one-fourth. So the entire function is being multiplied by one-fourth, which is going to compress it down. It's going to get smaller. It's going to shrink, which we call compression. So it's going to be compressed by a factor of one-fourth, just multiplying by one-fourth. So, you know, if you had five, that is now five-fourths. That's a pretty big compression there. So the new function, we'll just call the new function uh, d of x, is going to be one-fourth times g of x, but g of x is the square root of x. So my final new function is simply one-fourth times the square root of x. That's it. That's going to be a vertical compression by a factor of one-fourth. Let g of x be a, or let g be a function that is transformed of function f such that g of x equals negative 4 times f of x minus 5. Describe the transformations of the function that result in the function g. All right, so I notice a couple things here. First, I'm multiplying by 4. That 4 is going to be a vertical dilation, a vertical stretch. My outputs are going to multiply by 4. But I also notice the minus sign right here. Now remember, or a negative sign right there, that negative sign does not affect the vertical dilation. I'm still stretching by a factor of four. What that's going to do is that's going to reflect me across the x-axis. So for example, if I had a y-coordinate of seven, it's going to get stretched four, become a 28, and then it's going to reflect. It's going to become, instead of a positive 28, it's going to become a negative 28, and that's going to reflect me across the x-axis. Again, because this is something that's happened vertically. So if my output is a 28 and I reflect it across the x-axis or make it negative, now I'm a negative 28, which is reflecting me across the x-axis. Then when that's all said and done, I also notice that there's going to be a vertical translation down 5 as well. So I have a vertical dilation, and that is going to be a stretch by a factor of 4. Then we see that negative sign pop in, so that's going to reflect across the x-axis. And then there's that translation that's a vertical translation. I wish my handwriting was better. I should really go to handwriting class. Uh, and that's going to be a vertical translation down 5. So the whole graph's going to be down 5. And pretty simple there. So just to kind of kind of do a quick example here, just so everybody can kind of see the process. If I have a point two comma six, for example, that is on this function. Well, first, all the transformations happening here are vertical, so that two is actually going to stay completely the same. Even the reflection across the x-axis doesn't change your x-coordinate. Now I'm just going to kind of have to follow order of our operations. So first, that output of six is going to be multiplied by four, so it's going to become a twenty-four. If you want to kind of keep track of it over here. Then it's going to get reflected across the x-axis. So now it's going to become a negative 24, right? So this is positive 24. It gets reflected across the x-axis. Now it's negative 24. And then it's going to go down 5. So that new point is now going to be a negative 29. Just kind of following the transformations there. Not too bad. All right, one more example here. So the graph of the function f of x is x cubed minus 12x, and it's shown below. The relative max is negative 2, comma 16. We can see that relative max right around here. Sorry about that, right around there. And we also have a relative min, and that relative min seems to be right around 2, negative 16. Oh, it's a little bit of a 
typo there, relative min is 2 comma negative 16. All right, so a new function g is defined as 1 half times f of x. Okay, so write an expression for function g. So it's 1 half times f of x. So it's multiplying by 1 half on the outside. That's going to be a vertical dilation by a factor of 1 half. And because that 1 half is between 0 and 1, it's going to be a compression. So just kind of thinking about this graph is going to look like it's going to be compressed, right? So now that min is not going to be so high and that max isn't going to be so low. And again, sorry for the terrible drawing there. But again, my new function g of x is simply equal to 1 half times f of x, which is x cubed minus 12x. Now again, I can actually leave my answer like that or I could distribute the 1 half and I get 1 half x cubed minus 6x. All right, now what are the new coordinates of the relative max and the relative min? Well, now remember, a vertical dilation does not affect your x's at all. So my relative max is still going to have an x coordinate of negative 2, but that output of 16 is get multiplied by half, and that output is now 8. Pretty simple. And then for my min, the uh, x coordinate is not going to change. It was 2. That output of negative 16 is going to get multiplied by half. So that's now negative 8. So my new relative max and min are going to get compressed into here and into here. All right. Makes a lot of sense. These examples hopefully weren't too bad. Pretty simple stuff when you are having a vertical dilation. All right. That's it for vertical dilations, multiplicative transformations. Hopefully not too bad. It's really pretty simple. If you got that multiplication of a out in front, you're just going to multiply your outputs, your y values only by that value. And just keep in mind what happens when that a value is negative. It just reflects you across the x-axis. So you perform the dilation first, and then you take your y's, and any y that's positive becomes negative, any y that's negative becomes positive. You're just going to flip yourself across that x-axis. All right, that's it. Stay tuned for more videos over transformations.